guys, what's up? It is early morning here and I've got my biggie cup here saying it's all good. <laughs> you can tell I've already been doing some coffee damage this morning. Totoro is taking a bath in the dishwasher. For those of you who are new, Totoro is my, my signature favorite coffee cup. Um, but this morning I am drinking some of the Four Sigmatics um, mushroom coffee that I brewed up in my Bialetti. That stuff is wonderful. Um, but anyways, guys, who is excited for being back in school? It's that time of the year. I'm actually quite je jealous of, of those of you who are students out there. I really loved going back to school. <laughs> I found school a refuge. Uh, I just like the routine of, of academia and and learning, uh, but it can be a very, very stressful time. And uh, you, you know, with tests and homework and assignments, writing projects, etc. And nothing like stress of school uh, to flare things like acne, breakouts, and uh, you know, any other skin condition that you may have. Stress certainly flares that. So in today's video, as you can tell from the title and thumbnail, I've always gotten many requests to review some of the clean and clear products or like what are my thoughts on them. I have many of them and have tried many of them myself personally in the past and recommend um, you know, several of their products here and there. So I thought I would go through a lot of the clean and clear products with you guys um, and kind of tell you what I think they're useful for and what their limitations are. But from the get-go, I will just go ahead and say this, for all of the clean and clear products, all of them, they all suffer from the same limitation. And that is they all contain fragrance. The fragrance is pretty strong as far as the, the, the smell. And many, the majority of them also contain menthol. That's what imparts the tingling sensation. So I cannot recommend any of the clean and clear products for people with sensitive skin, rosacea, or like eczema prone skin, because fragrance is something that is known to be bothersome to these conditions. And menthol as well, which is kind of in the family of fragrance, is a vasodilator, so it's going to exacerbate redness. If you're somebody who has a lot of post-inflammatory erythema from healing acne, Clean and Clear products may not be ideal for you either. Um, but, th so that is their over overriding limitation is that they do all contain fragrance and the majority of them contain like menthol as well as oftentimes peppermint to impart that tingling sensation that it's actually doing something. Really, it's, it's just potentially contributing to a little bit more redness. Um, but some of their products are still good regardless of the fact that they have these ingredients and they can still be helpful despite those, despite those, those problematic players in there but those are those are the problematic ingredients in all of the clean and clear products so I'll just say that from the get-go and now moving forward let's talk about let's talk about the ingredients in the products that are good far and away my absolute favorite clean and clear product which I don't have but hopefully can float a little image here is the Persigel 10 it is a leave-on 10% benzoyl peroxide gel this is a phenomenal product for a spot pimple treatment, okay? If you get one of those vicious little pimples that pops up you know, around the jaw area, your forehead, your nose, and all you can do is stare at it and you're tempted to squeeze it and manipulate it, don't do that. <laughs> it won't make it better, but this product can help it quite a bit. It's a 10% benzoyl peroxide leave-on gel. The way to use it is to just take your pinky finger and get a little pinky-sized dot of the product on your, on your pinky to your clean and dry face. Just put it out on there and rub it in a gentle little circle to make a thin film and allow it to completely dry and do not touch it. That, uh, the benzoyl peroxide is wonderful. It is anti-inflammatory, it is antimicrobial, and it will kind of help to draw out some of the inflammation within the, within the pimple itself. It will help the pimple, quote, come to a head. What you will see is that the pimple will kind of uh, evolve to have what you may describe as a white head, but it's actually just a pustule. It's just a collection of that the inflammatory cells that, that are part of acne and part of pimples, just kind of coming to the surface. 
the Persa Gel 10 can really, really help with that, all right? This is what you need to know about using this product. A, it is incredibly drying, all right? B, it, as I said, the active ingredient is benzoyl peroxide. And you may be using topical tretinoin, and you may have recalled my other videos, I've said tretinoin and benzoyl peroxide should not be combined together because the benzoyl peroxide can oxidize the tretinoin and compromise its efficacy, all right? However, in this setting, we were just spot treating one pimple, this is a way that you can actually combine benzoyl peroxide and tretinoin in your skincare routine, not a problem, because it's not as though you're putting the benzoyl, the Persagel tent all over your entire face. So you can use, you can actually use them in combination in, in that type of situation where you're spot treating with the, with the benzoyl peroxide, all right? So that is wonderful. The third thing that you may probably already, you may already know if you have acne and you've dealt with this ingredient before, is that benzoyl peroxide, uh, particularly when it's wet, uh, can bleach, bleaches your fabrics, all right? It does not bleach your skin. It can bleach your hair temporarily, your hair strands, but it bleaches fabric. So the way to avoid this is, you know, just put it on as a spot treatment to the pimple and let it completely dry before, before you go putting on your clothing <clears throat> and and that sort of thing. For me personally, another measure that I take is to put a um, put an old t-shirt down on my pillowcase before I go to bed at night. That way I don't transfer any of the benzoyl peroxide to my to my linens. You can use this as a spot treatment overnight. You can use it twice a day, actually. You know, you can use it as a spot treatment in the evening, and then you can um, reapply it again in the morning. Just make sure you wear sunscreen. Uh, it is going to be very drying and irritating. But if you find that the 10% Persa Gel, the 10% Benzoyl Peroxide is just too drying and too irritating and you don't tolerate it, next up in the Clean and Clear lineup of products that I really like are their Advantage Acne, Advantage Acne lineup. Everything comes in either like a silver or a white bottle. But they have a um, fast acting treatment gel that is 2.5% Benzoyl Peroxide. It can be used in the same manner. 2.5% Benzoyl, benzoyl Peroxide is, a, is equal effective in, in clearing the lesions of acne, far less irritating, it's going to be a slower onset. So what that means for you is that you have to be a little bit more patient. The 10% benzoyl peroxide, quite strong, quite irritating, probably will probably dry up that pimple a lot faster, whereas the 2.5 is a lot gentler, a little bit slower onset, but will ultimately yield the same results, just, just with a delay, all right? So if, if the 10% is too drying and too irritating, stick with the fast acting treatment 2.5% gel of the Advantage Acne line. They also make a, in the Advantage Acne line, they also make another face wash, a face cleanser that I'm a fan of that is a 5% benzoyl peroxide wash. The way to use this in acne is to just lather it in the affected areas where you have acne and let it sit on the skin for a few minutes and then rinse it off. Um, and by doing it this way, if you're somebody who has always found benzoyl peroxide drying and irritating, this is a great way to kind of introduce it to get some good acne control. It is still effective as a wash form like this. Um, and it's just a, a helpful way to, to use it if you find that overall it's too drying and irritating. So the 5% benzoyl peroxide wash is, is another great one from their Advantage Acne, Advantage Acne line. Moving along, another set of products in the Advantage line that I enjoy are their 2% salicylic acid products. They have a Clean and Clear Advantage Mark Treatment Spot Gel that is 2% salicylic acid in combination with glycolic acid. Um, so it's going to exfoliate, it's going to be anti-inflammatory, and salicylic acid can also be helpful for kind of slowing down some of pigment cell biology. So if you're somebody whose acne heals with a dark mark, using salicylic acid um, as a spot treatment to your acne can not only help the acne spot go away a little bit faster, but can also help with um, some of that post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation that can occur from healing acne. So the Clean and Clear Advantage Mark Treatment, it's 2% salicylic acid and glycolic acid used as a leave-on, um, as a leave-on treatment like overnight is, is, a phenomenal, is a phenomenal choice that I really like. 
Similarly, they have another 2% salicylic acid leave-on gel. It is the Clean and Clear Advantage Acne Spot Treatment. It is 2% salicylic acid and a little bit of witch hazel. So it doesn't have the glycolic acid that the Clean and Clear Advantage Mark Treatment Leave-On Gel has. But it too can be really helpful in this manner if you find that the one with the glycolic acid in it is somehow more irritating to you. It is another one that, that can be used. And to me, they're both, they're both pretty similar. I'm not even sure that the glycolic acid in the the mark treatment one is really doing too much um, but you know I don't appreciate that either are substantially different and just kind of their irritation um, so you know the, the that's sort of the differences between those two but they're both they're both good although you know as I said suffering the limitation of containing fragrance um, they also have a variety of salicylic acid based face washes if you'll recall back to my BHA videos salicylic acid in a face wash works very well it gets into the oil glands to help control oil production can be very helpful for acne um, check out those videos if you're at all curious about BHAs or salicylic acid but I didn't mention clean and clear in those videos um, but they do have a variety of 2% salicylic acid face washes one of their BHA face washes that I get a fair number of questions about is the Clean and Clear Blackhead Eraser Scrub. It's 2% uh, salicylic acid. It can it can help lightly exfoliate some of the some of the rough and bumpy stuff that might be associated with your acne, but it can can be very drying, particularly if you if you go overboard with the scrubbing. You all know that I've always said don't don't go scrubbing and buffing your face. There's always this temptation to do that, but it really can just exacerbate dryness. Dryness is is a problem with acne in particular and can actually make the acne quite a bit worse. And so I don't recommend aggressive scrubbing, but the blackhead eraser is is pretty decent and overall fairly gentle for one of these uh, blackhead scrubs. Um, it can also be helpful if used on an ongoing basis in the evenings, I would say daily, uh, for mitigating the appearance of pores. Many of you are always asking me about stuff that can be helpful for pores. This one can actually be helpful. It sort of wicks away some of the oil that makes the makes the pore appear more prominent and then likewise can can help impart some long-term control on oil production via the salicylic acid in in the scrub so it can be helpful in that that manner for for pores <laughs> All right, but one salicylic acid wash that they have that I personally use um, intermittently on my body is this Acne Triple, Clean, Triple Clear Bubble Foam Cleanser. This is a 2% BHA uh, wash. It does have quite a bit of menthol and peppermint in it and it is very, very tingly. So I only use this on my body, but what I like about it is I use this to acne prone areas on my body in the shower. And what I do is I kind of step outside after the skin gets wet, I kind of step Step out of the the direction of the water and the vehicle is this like bubbly foam all right here I'll just I'll just do a little bit on here you can see it comes out it comes out like a bubble I really like it and the reason I like this is I step out of the direction of the water and you can just tap this onto the areas and it stays it doesn't drip down the rest of your your body into other areas so you can you can direct it to those locations and it stays on the skin pretty well um, and that salicylic acid can then bubble on into the skin and you know do its thing. You do that, you know, leave it on the skin for a few minutes and then rinse it off. As far as and also for ingrown hairs in the beard area related to shaving, this is also pretty good to lather up as kind of a pre-shave, let it sit on the skin with that bubble foam, you kind of look like Santa Claus, um, you know, with a bubbly beard, let it sit on there and then rinse it off before shaving. Um, men, you know, this is, this is kind of clean and clear. I feel as though a lot of their products, you know, are marketed more towards like teen girls and adolescent women. But I think men out there, um, you know, might find this advantageous in the beard area. Um, the vehicle is kind of useful and uh, it has that nice, it has a tingly sensation that you're kind of used to already with a lot of your aftershaves and shaving lotions. If you like that kind of thing, uh, you might find this useful. But if you have sensitive skin, you know, it, it'll be a no-go for you. But can be very helpful in controlling those, those ingrown hairs. I have a whole video on ingrown hair, so if that is you, check it out. But I like that one quite a bit, and I use it myself on my body in acne-prone areas. 
Get another sip in. All right, so so far I have talked about clean and clear products that contain benzoyl peroxide as the active ingredient and clean and clear products that talk about salicylic acid as the active ingredient. And if you'll recall back to my pregnancy skincare videos, neither ingredient is considered safe to use during pregnancy, all right? Really the only active acne ingredients kind of in your your over-the-counter skincare products that you will find in the clean and clear stuff that are okay during pregnancy are alpha hydroxy acids. So one of their products is the 60 second shower mask. Um, for those of you who like alpha hydroxy acids, this, I wish I had left the fragrance out of this and the menthol is very, very, very tingling. So unfortunately not great for, for people with sensitive skin. All right, so one product that um, I have tried out and I'm not, too certain is useful but wanted to talk about is the clean and clear morning burst hydrating gel moisturizer all right i bring this product up because using a moisturizer in people with acne in, in everyone but in people with acne in particular is very very important okay we have come to learn in the last several years in dermatology that moisturizers you know we used to think acne is a disease of excess oil, we need to dry it up. But what we now know is that not only is it a disease driven by excess oil production, but there's also uh, what suge what's suggested to be an underlying barrier defect, meaning a tendency towards dry skin that contributes to the acne and that makes treatments um, you know, not as, not as effective as they could be if they are used along with a moisturizer. So very important, very important to use moisturizers when you are, when you are dealing with acne. Um, but anyways, the clean and clear moisture, the clean and clear morning burst hydrating gel moisturizer. I wanted to like this, but can't say I would recommend it. It smells wonderful, um, but it's in this um, gel vehicle that honestly just really isn't super moisturizing. It's very, very lightweight. And you know, I wouldn't feel comfortable recommending this as a as a nighttime moisturizer for the face. I don't think people are gonna enjoy it. It's kind of, it's just not moisturizing enough and it feels like you've got perfume all over your face. I don't really recommend it for the face. And they call it morning burst, but I disagree. This should be evening burst because if you're anybody with skin, but particularly if people with acne, in the morning your moisturizer should have sunscreen in it and you should be applying sunscreen as well. So using sunscreens in the morning is really the way to go with your moisturizer, not, not something like this, all right? Um, so, you know, I don't really think this offers people a whole lot as far as a moisturizer, but I did want to mention it because using a moisturizer is very important. Um, and so if you're looking for a moisturizer, check out some of my videos on my favorite moisturizers and those that are good for oily skin. I also have a video on sunscreens for oily skin. So check that out. But, um, you know, this, this to me is kind of like putting on a Bath and Body Works lotion all over your face. It really smells like that. It's got like a cucumbery, yeah, it's got mango and cucumber in it. So it smells like, it smells like cucumber melon. <laughs> the last category I will talk about are their masks. They have a lot of fun masks out there and some of them I've tried out and enjoy. One that I have not tried out is the Triple Clear Cleansing Mask. It is a 1% salicylic acid mask that you leave on. It has bentonite clay in it. Bentonite clay um, can help uh, just kind of transiently pull out a little bit of extra oil out of, the, out of the skin and kind of just help reduce shininess. It is very, very transient, however, so don't, don't get too excited about clay masks. People are all about them. They don't really revolutionize anything in your skin, and if anything, can be very drying. But, you know, if you're somebody who's got shiny skin and doing a clay mask here and there, you may see, you may enjoy the benefit of reduced shine um, just for the next, I don't know, 24 hours. I don't recommend doing that. On, a, on an ongoing basis. But their triple clear cleansing mask not only has the bentonite clay in it, but it also has salicylic acid in it. Don't put it around your eyes and just put it, just put it kind of in the T-zone area and it can be helpful in not only reducing shininess, helping um, with a little bit of extra acne control, but also diminishing the appearance of pores, all right? So that's a decent one. And then they also have one that I've used and enjoy. It's the Detox Clay Mask. This is just a bent night clay mask, all right? So if you find salicylic acid is too irritating, try this one out. I, as far as clay masks go, I think this trumps many of that crap that they're selling you in Sephora for like 
80 bucks. Um, this is far better. It does have fragrance in it, but it's a bentonite clay, um, which, which guys, by the way, is the same thing as that Aztec healing mask. It's just, it's just bentonite clay. All right. It, it transiently can mop up some sebum and oil and be, be helpful. But, um, this has that in it. And, uh, aside from the fragrance it's otherwise fine and much more affordable and, uh, you know, much better choice in my opinion than all of those expensive Sephora masks out there. Um, this is this is a good good drugstore clay mask that I recommend for anybody who wants to do a clay mask intermittently for a little bit of shan reduction. All right, and then they also have this jelly eye mask sheet, which I wanted to like this. I've tried this a few times. All right, I wanted to like this, but I, I really don't understand what's going on here. Uh, first of all, I really wish again they had left fragrance out of this. But I don't get why it's only for for like this half of your face, right? It's called an eye mask, but it also gets your forehead and your upper cheeks area. So you know, I don't understand why they left out the the, the other the lower half of the face. It's really difficult to put this on. It slips around and everything. It's kind of like the Neutrogena um, Hydro Boost mask. It's really just difficult to apply and doesn't stay on particularly well. Uh, and I didn't really think that it offers, I don't really think that it offers too much, uh, but it's not, you know, there are worse masks out there. Uh, I just don't understand why, why they left out the lower half of the mask. If they wanted to do an eye mask, why wouldn't they just do something that actually, it doesn't even go over your eyes, right? I, I don't understand it. So that one puzzles me. And then the last thing that I will mention is they have some oil absorbing sheets. I haven't used them, but these oil absorbing sheets can also be a helpful way, like if you're going out in the evening to, to wick away some of that shininess. If you're somebody who wears makeup and you're, you're getting ready to, re, to put on your makeup uh, again or touch it up and you've got a lot of shininess, uh, the oil absorbing sheets I know are very popular. I don't wear makeup, so I don't really use these types of things, but comment below on if you've used the oil absorbing sheets, how they compare to some of the other ones. They seem pretty affordable. They don't really have any, any ingredient in them that can be problematic. I will say this about the oil absorbing sheets, you know, during the day using them, uh, you are removing your sunscreen when you use them. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're pulling off photo protection. So make sure you're reapplying your sunscreen stuff as well and just be cognizant of the fact that there's no oil absorbing sheet that you could be daubing on yourself that's not simultaneously taking off your sun protection which is which is really protecting your skin from the damaging effects of ultraviolet light, sunburn, skin cancer, flares of acne, etc, etc. So don't don't pull off, don't pull off the good stuff. But anyways, guys, these are kind of all the clean and clear products that I'm most familiar with and what I, you know, enjoy and think it's worthwhile from the drugstore. Um, a drugstore for skincare products in general, I are my preference and what I think people should gravitate towards rather than all the expensive stuff. I know this is a very popular drugstore line, so I wanted to review as much of it as I could for you all. Um, and I know it tends to be marketed towards some of those, you know, some of my younger demographic who, who asked me about it a fair amount. So hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.